Hey, my name is Ross Kern, and today, we're, and today we're going to be talking about mechanical properties of metals. So, some things we're going to cover. First, we're going to start with some basics and define what stress, strain, and Young's elastic modulus are, so we can better explain some specific mechanical properties of metals. I've tried to keep this video really short, and hopefully a little bit entertaining, so bear with me. So, what is stress? Stress is an engineering pro or it's an intrinsic property, and it is defined as force over cross-sectional area. Stress is used because if we wanted, or if we had some material and we apply some force to it, it's going to take a certain amount of force before it breaks. But if we take twice the amount of material and apply the force, or apply force, it'd take twice as much force before it breaks. Now this is not because the material suddenly got stronger, it's because we have it's because we have double the amount of material. So stress is a way to factor out the shape and size of the material and have it focus purely on the material properties. And this is defined as um, force over cross sectional area. So what is strain? Strain is similar to stress, as in it's an intrinsic property, and it's pretty much um, how much elong how much something elongates over its initial length. So if you were to have some wire and apply some force to it, it elongates some amount before it breaks. But if we have twice the amount of wire and we apply force to it, it elongates twice as long before it breaks. And now this is not because um, it suddenly got you know more stretchy or more ductile. This is just because we have twice the amount of material. So an exact similar fashion of stress this is a way to factor out the shape, size, or how much of the material is, and have it focus on the material properties. This is a dimensionless quality, or dimensionless, yeah. So, Young's elastic modulus. Young's, mass, Young's elastic modulus, or the modulus of elasticity, is, in short, how strongly bonded atoms are to each other. So, if it's a covalent bond, which are very strong, it's a very stiff or a very um, high, very uh, large number for Young's elastic modulus. Whereas if it's a very weakly bonded, like metallic bonding, it's very, uh, it's less steep. It's a smaller number. This is in pressure, and this under, if a material is under like low amounts of stress and strain, they're proportional, which is which gives us the definition of Hooke's law, where it's um, stress is equal to the modulus of, elastic of elasticity multiplied by the uh, strain. This is also um, referred to, uh, or Young's elastic modulus is often referred to as stiffness. So let's get into uh, some mechanical properties. So proportion limit and yield stress. So proportional limit is when the stress, when a stress strain curve stops being linear and starts the curve. But if you were to look really closely, this is a really hard point to exactly find. So ideally, we'd have a yield stress to be def or the yield or the yield point to be defined here. But because it's really hard to find or the pinpoint on a graph, we do a 0 0.002 offset or a 0.2 percent offset. And we take the same slope as Young's elastic modulus from that point up until we reach the um, graph. And that point, we define the yield, the yield stress. And the yield stress is when the um, is what we typically say is the where the material begins to plastically deform. In reality, it's the proportional limit. But because these should be very, very close to each other, we say pretty much the material begins to uh, deform at the yield point. Right there. It's important to know that anything to the left of the proportion limit, or in most cases the yield point, it's elastic deformation, which means instead of bonds breaking, the atomic bonds is between atoms is just stretching. They're not actually like rupturing or sliding or anything like that. Whereas for to the right of it, it's plastic deformation, which means at some point, because the how much strength or how much uh, force is being applied to it, it's too strong and it breaks these atoms and they slide and then they recombine. 
And so keep in mind to the left is elastic, to the right is elastic and plastic deformation. So tensile strength. As you can see here at the uh, very bottom left, or not the bottom left, but right here, this is this whole region is the um, is the elastic region. And if you look close, it's really hard to tell where exactly it begins to uh, where it begins the stop being proportional or stops being linear. So this is why we would use a 0.002 or yeah, a 0.002 offset to find the yields, the yield point. So tensile strength is um, the maximum value on the stress strain diagram or the stress strain graph. And at this point, anything to the right of it is where it uh, begins to neck. And necking is pretty much, uh, it's a form of failure where at this point, instead of elongating or applying stress uniformly throughout the whole material, it begins to focus at a certain point within the material, which because it's being focused there, the cross-sectional area begins smaller, or begins to shrink, which in turn causes more stress the, to, um, the, which causes the stress through that point to increase until failure where it just completely snaps and breaks apart. So ductility. Ductility is the amount of elongation at fracture. So this is a really easy property to read off a stress strain diagram or a stress strain graph and it's just you find the fracture point which is at the very end of the curve and you just read straight down and it's the strain. It's dimensionless so the farther out it is on a graph, the more ductile it is, and the less farther it out is, or like, you know, the short is, shorter it is, the less strain it has, the, um, the less ductile it is, and it's brittle. And these are relative terms. It can also, ductility may also be explained as percent reduction in area. We're not going to talk about it, but just know that there's multiple ways to calculate ductility. So... Resilience is the capacity of a material to absorb energy before plastic deformation. So my memory recalls right, resilience in term, or in short, means resistance to change. So the way I think about it is this is how much energy this material can take before it begins to plastically deform. So this is the total amount of energy the, uh, the bonds or the atomic bonds can stretch and hold before they need to begin breaking to go to a lower yield or to a lower energy point. And just because this is a linear region where it should be, it's really easy to calculate. It's pretty much just either if you want to guys want if you guys want to do integrals, but it's pretty much a triangle where it's one half base times height. It's not that bad. And because we have Hooke's law, if let's say you're not given the yield um, stress or the yield strain, you can calculate what it is. They're different. There's like four different formulas you can like get from this one if you just apply Hooke's law. So toughness. So if resilience was how much energy it takes before it begins to plastically deform, toughness is how much total energy the material can take before it breaks. So in turn, this is the area under the curve to the failure point. This is in um, pressure. There's also something called fracture toughness, which is pretty much resistance to a uh, fracture because of cracks. Um, we're not going to talk about it in this video, but just know that there are different types of toughness to uh, there are different types of toughness. So we're going to talk about hardness. Hardness is resistance to localized plastic deformation. And the way that we test this is we take, or for Vickers method, we take a pretty much a pyramid diamond indenter and we press it into the material. Or for Brindle's method, we take a sphere and we press it into the material. We measure how much it indents into the material. Now, you might be thinking, well, why do we need to know this? Well, hardness really isn't important by itself, but what is important is that it's roughly proportional to tensile strength. So you can find out the ultimate tensile strength of material by using a hardness test. And hardness tests in general, they're really cheap and easy. So you can, if you want to find out, do a true tensile strength test, you pretty much have to pull apart the material until it breaks or until it reaches its maximum, which really like it's, it's costly for like real world application. It's really expensive. 
harness test is really cheap and easy, and it doesn't even break the material. Just like these indentures are very, very, very small, so it's like it's really nice to have these. <laughs> so what have we covered? We'd covered stress, strain, and Young's elastic modulus, as well as mechanical properties of metals such as proportional limit, yield strength, yield stress, sorry, tensile strength, ductility, resilience, toughness, and hardness. I hope you guys found this a little bit entertaining and informative. Hopefully you guys were on board out of your mind. Thank you for your time today. Have a good one.